Hey guys, TJ here, and welcome back to another video. During the past few weeks, a lot of people have asked me about building castles in Minecraft. How do I plan one? How do I decide where a tower, gate or other structure should be? What blocks do I use? In today's video, I will try to explain as best as I can from my own perspective using 10 steps how you plan a castle, all the things you have to pay attention to, and of course, how you can build these amazing fortifications yourself. Before we start, these videos take quite long to make. If you do enjoy my content or end up finding this video helpful, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. It would make me very happy. Anyway, let's get started. Starting off with our first step, orientation. I've built a lot of castles for the past few years and I can guarantee you that it is very important to think about in which direction you are going with your build. If you have no idea what you are going to build beforehand, you are almost guaranteed to have a very long day. I promise. If you are not very familiar with castle layouts, a great tip I would give you is to just Google. There are so many great images of real life castles on the internet that could be a perfect inspiration for your build. Just pick a nice castle you think would fit on your hero island and get started. Step 2. The layout. So now that you know what direction you're going in, you can start planning your build. For this video, our castle orientation will be the castle of Neuschwanstein in Germany. While this isn't exactly a medieval castle, since it was built in 1869, it still looks pretty dope. Basically, all you have to do is look at the image and you can already decide where towers and gates should be. What I always do first is just basically copy the layout of the real life castle. Make sure you use different colors of wool or concrete in order to easily define where the halls, towers, walls and gates are. When you have done that, you can either stick to that layout or add your own twist to it. A very good example is by adding an extra hall on the north side or changing the location of one of the towers. You could also relocate the gate or add an entire outer wall. By making these small changes, you are already making the castle very original, while you are not making it too complicated for yourself. Of course, all this depends on the location you are building in and the amount of space you have. For example, on a mountain, the amount of space you have to build might be limited, so keep that in mind. Step 3. Realism. This is not the most important step, this is more my personal preference. When I am building, I like realism. Castles were structures made to household a few of the most important families in medieval times. You want them to be safe inside. A lot of garrisons could hold a castle for years against armies 10 times their size, if not more. So what you really have to pay attention to when you are going for a realistic take on the castle is whether the keep is defendable or not. If you are building on a steep mountain you can ignore some of the directions. But when you are building on a hill, on which armies could attack the castle from multiple directions, you have to stand on the sides of the castle looking to those directions and think to yourself, isn't this going to be too easy for the enemy to penetrate the walls of the castle? Think about blind spots, low placed windows inside the walls or too many trees surrounding the fortification and thus blocking the view for the watchman. Step 4. Height. Of course, deciding where what should be is very important, but what is just as important is the height of all those structures. This is also something you have to figure out before building. How high is every structure going to be? It is important you vary a lot in this, because if every structure of the building is the same height, it just looks boring. For example, we have the cloud gate over here. I used a lot of variation in the height of the different structures, which gives a very nice and fascinating look. What I always do is to make the main keep, in which you probably will be building your throne room, higher than the other structures. The towers near this main keep are higher than the others as well, while the most outer walls are probably going to be the lowest of the keep. Although do keep in mind not to make some of the structures too high or too low, because otherwise it will also look weird. Same goes for the wave effect, as I would like to call it, a good example of that you see on this image. If one part of the building is not significantly higher, then it is also going to look very strange. When you have decided the height of every building, once again look at your layout from multiple directions and decide whether you are satisfied with it or not. And even here you can use the castle you are using as an inspiration to decide how high the building should be. Step 5. The final decision. This sounds pretty final for only the fifth step, I know, but the decision you are about to make here is decisive for how your castle is going to look like. Just take an overhead view of your planned layout and think to yourself, is this really what I am satisfied with? Isn't that corner too weird or am I not overusing the towers? Of course you can still change a few things in the layout afterwards, but it is way more relaxing if you don't have to puzzle all too much during the later building process. Trust me. Step 6. Materials. So now that you have entirely planned your castle, it is time to decide what block types you will use for your structures. You could use a block that somewhat resembles the building materials your inspiration castle is built of, but of course that isn't necessary. I find this a very difficult part to exactly explain to you, it is just very important that the blocks you use suit each other well. For example, don't build a castle made out of prismarine with a sandstone roof. That is not going to work out. 
It is also important not to use too many different types of blocks because you don't want your castle to look like a rainbow. And lastly, it is also worth mentioning that you use a block type that would fit your surroundings. I mean, don't build with dark oak wood in the desert or with red sandstone in the snow. Step 7. Block Variations I thought it would be a good idea to dive a little bit deeper into the block types that would go well with each other. For example, when you are building an Arabic castle in the desert, you will most likely use sandstone. Although, sandstone would also work very well in a Roman, tropical and even a standard medieval setting. Also, never build your walls out of one block. Oftentimes, walls have large, boring surfaces. Instead, use a combination of blocks. If you are going for a sandstone type of keep, Use not only normal sandstone but also smooth and cut sandstone. For a stone type of castle, use a mix of stone bricks, stone and andesite instead of only stone or only stone bricks. And of course these are not the only options, there are way more. Step 8. The roof. When you are building your roofs, first decide what block type you are going to use for your roof. Like I said earlier, don't make a sandstone roof on a prismarine base. What I always do when I'm not following the block types of the castle I use as an inspiration is just messing around a little bit. Just see what works out and what doesn't. You could even use multiple types of blocks if you would like to. Apart from the block type, you also have the roof type. Also here there are a lot of options. You could go for a steep one or a more flat one. Whatever you prefer. One roof type you especially can goof around with is the one of your towers. You can easily modify the steepness of this roof. If you have multiple towers on your build and some of them vary in steepness, it will give a very nice result. Of course you could even add some structures without a roof. Instead you could place some battlements on the sides or you could even go crazier and do both. Step number 9. Detailing. So now that you have built the entire castle with your specified block types and roofs, you can start detailing the keep. This is the part in which you have so many options. This is the part in which you will decide what the theme of the castle will be and what type of liveliness you are going to add. What I always do first is decide where I'm going to place the windows. You could use fences, glass panes or stairs to make different types of windows. Always think critically about where you are going to place a window using the following three criteria. Does it look nice from the outside? Is this a logical spot? Like if I look outside the window, do I see anything? It would be illogical to place a gap that looks directly into a wall. And third, is my window placed high enough? I mean. Never place a window a few blocks from the ground because if your castle is being attacked by an enemy, the enemy will just break into the window and enter your fortification. Now let's get to the other details. Of course a flat wall is historically quite correct, in Minecraft it looks boring. So in order to compensate you have to compromise. In order to do this I have a few examples you could use to add more depth into your building. You could add small gaps to your walls and towers by using stairs. Additionally, stairs can also be used to make small protrusions. On the ground you could build small pillars which could serve as some kind of extra base. You could place some signs, butts and trapdoors on the walls as an extra detail, just make sure you do not overuse them. If you are in a foresty area, leaves are a great way to decorate the roof. Not to mention that the chimney also looks nice. And finally, you could add your own custom variations to the walls, like a hanging cage, flags, banners, fines and other small goods. And finally, step 10, the interior. Something people also ask me is, do you keep the interior in mind when you are building the exterior? And to be honest, I absolutely don't. First things first, interior is crucial when you want your building to be lively and explorable. But the first thing people see is the exterior. So in my opinion, the exterior has the priority. What I always do when I have completed all of the exterior is walk into the empty structures and just brainstorm. If you think a specific room will be suitable for a throne room, dining hall or smith, then just go for it and do it. If a specific room is too small or too weird and not suitable for anything, it isn't a strategy to just fill up the part of the building and make it inaccessible for entry. To be honest, the interior is a very large subject on its own. I could make a separate episode about interiors if you would like me to. If that is the case, just let me know in the comment section and I can look at it. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you find this video helpful, if so consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. I really tried my best explaining everything as best as I could, I had never made a video like this before, so also for me it was a first. If you still have questions, you could always enter my discord server and ask them in the Ask a Builder or Minecraft Talk channel, and I will try to answer them. Anyway, have a very nice day and see you next time, bye bye.